Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. This one is all about Redshift proxy files, and using them can have some really good benefits in Cinema 4D. So we'll briefly talk about when to use them, and a tip that I have for overriding the materials, which makes them easier to use. Now, there are a lot of other videos here on YouTube covering Redshift proxies, so I won't go too far into depth. But to summarize, they're a version of the asset, usually geometry, but it can include materials and lights, that is pre-written into the language that Redshift uses and saved onto your hard drive. So when you start up the render view in a normal scene, you'll see some messages in the bottom right corner that correspond to loading the geometry. Creating a proxy file is basically baking out that step. The proxy file gets written to your disk and then read immediately when the render view needs to start up. This can help improve your time to first pixel and heavy scenes. Creating the proxy files is fairly simple. With some of the geometry selected, we can just go to File, Export, RS Proxy. We would point this file to where we want to save it. Now once that file is written, we can see it here in our viewport. Now I have toggled on the mesh preview, so we can see that these are just some smaller buildings that help fill in a couple little areas in this city scene. And it's important to point out that writing these proxies using the default exporter will combine them all into one object. Now, if you would like an easier way to export proxies and have them separated, I tend to use a script that was created by John Bosley. You can find his website here at brasco.uk, where he has a Dropbox collection of scripts he's made. So if we were to run this from my user scripts folder, we can see the UI looks a little bit differently, but if we were to hit OK and then pick the save location, it would write out each of these objects as individual proxies instead of lumping them together. This is really handy when you need to scatter things like trees for a forest or buildings for a city. So now that we've covered what the Redshift proxies are and how to make them, let's look at a situation when I choose to use them. Now I've been showing this cyberpunk city scene where I have many, many buildings. So objects like this sitting statically in the scene where I no longer need to edit any of the geometry or materials for them are a prime candidate to be converted to Redshift proxies. The most significant benefit can be in the time to first pixel when you start up the render view, as I mentioned earlier. I'll render out two versions of this scene to compare the time to first pixel between using no proxies and using proxies. Since there's so much geometry in the buildings for this city, there'll be a pretty impressive difference in the extracting geometry phase of the render view starting up. In an extreme case like this, the benefit could be a lot of seconds or even minutes like my case and this benefit can apply to each frame of an animation when rendering to the picture viewer. So in the options for the proxy object, we have this material section. Now by default, the proxy will use the materials from the source object at the time that you wrote them, and we see that we don't have access to those. So if we were to delete the original source object, we really wouldn't have an easy way to edit any of these materials again. So this is what I always do. I'll change this material setting to scene, and then from the source object, I'll select all of the textures and their texture tags, and I'll control drag these onto the proxy. And if for any reason we go to edit and delete unused materials, we won't lose these materials. So I can jump into one of these materials, and for example, I can lower the emission color of the sign. Now that might seem like a simple tip, but it saved me a lot of headache because I've written so many proxies in the past and wanted to be able to edit their materials. One caveat with using proxies. It's very important to note that this does not bake in and include the image textures. It's not like a save and collect function. The moment you write the proxy file, it will hard code the file path that it was using for that image texture. So if you want to send these to a render farm, you cannot use globalized paths like I am right here. I highly recommend you use single level relative file pathing. If you're a power user though, chances are you didn't need this warning and you can figure out how to get nested relative paths to work. So I think that'll cover everything for this quick tip on Redshift proxies. I hope this helps you out a bit and serves as an intro and example on when to use them. I'm sure there are a variety of ways you can take advantage of using Redshift proxies in your workflow. So with that all said, thank you so much for watching.